Are you looking for a smart plug that works with Alexa, Google Home, Siri Shortcuts, IFTTT, Smarter Things, Line Clove, and Apple HomeKit that comes in a ridiculously small package? Then you're in the right place. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the SwitchBot Plug Mini Apple HomeKit Edition. There are two different Switch Plug Minis that you can get. One is compatible with Apple HomeKit, one is not. This particular one is the Apple HomeKit version. Now, before we actually get into the review, I will state that SwitchBot did reach out to me and provide me with the Plug Mini HomeKit Edition for the purposes of doing an unbiased review, which is what you are going to get. So let's get into it. For starters, let's actually take a look at the form factor that we get here. At the top, you will notice some blue Panthers tape. That is mainly to cover up. There is a QR code that you can use as part of setup. So didn't want to have that visible in the review, but the plug itself is ridiculously small compared to other smart plug mini style plugs out there. The one thing I did notice is it does taper off in the front, so you can see it kind of gets a little fatter in the back, but dimension-wise, you're looking at 2.8 inches by 1.5 inches by 2.3. And for size comparison, because I have an affinity for smart plugs, here we have it next to the Amazon smart plug. You can see it's considerably smaller. Here we have it next to the Belkin Wemo uh, mini smart plug at the time and the TP-Link smart plug. Notice that form factor wise, it's very similar in size. And the one that I cannot grab at the moment is the Wise smart plug, which is fairly close to the actual size of this and uh, price point, which we'll talk about a little later. As we walk around the actual smart plug, we'll talk about the front here. Well, you've got kind of like these recessed uh, protectors for the actual plug-in portion, which I kind of like. Down here, we have an LED light. This is a bright white light, which if you're using this in a dark room, hypothetically to turn on and off a fan, so you have white noise going in the middle of the night, that bright white light can get a little distracting. However, utilizing the application, which we'll talk about a little later, you can actually turn that off. So good on SwitchBot for allowing you to do that. Coming across to the, we'll call it left-hand side, there's nothing on the right-hand side. We do have a very large and tactile actuation button, which does, when the device is turned on and off, make, makes a noticeable clicking sound like this. That is not to say that it is distracting in any way, shape, or form, but I do like things that have that click because, hey, it lets me know, did that actually turn off in the middle of the night? So when I like cut power to something, hypothetically like a TV set that I can't tell if it's on or off, if I have this plugged into it, I can tell because I'll hear that loud click. And here you can also see kind of what I was talking about with that tapering. You can see it gets fatter towards the back, but that design actually allows you to have two of the mini smart plugs, one on top of each other. You can even use it with other smart plugs should you have them, but you could stack two of these. Coming across to the back, there's really nothing to look at. You've got your standard for me, US plug-in, but I will use this opportunity to say that this can accept 15 amps of power, so that's going to be up to fairly larger pieces of electronic equipment that you have around your house. So this smart plug will allow you to enable them to be smarter and not have to worry about overloading the plug itself. But because this is a smart plug, there is a setup process to utilize it for the smart features which you're getting it for. So let's take a look at just how easy it is to set up SwitchBot Plug Mini here. This will be setup of the SwitchBot Plug Mini. Right here we've got the SwitchBot app opened up. And with the plug mini here, we are going to select the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. And then we are going to locate the plug mini from the list here. And here we go, plug mini US. We're gonna select that, kind of giving you general uh, do's and don'ts for the plug. So what we're gonna do is we have to plug in the device and then hold down the power button for about two seconds. So what we're gonna do is we are going to bring into focus over here a power supply gonna plug in the SwitchBot Mini there, and we're gonna give it a chance to realize that there's power. It does not look like there's any lights that happen. So we're going to press and hold now for two seconds. It is flashing, might be a little hard to see, but we hit next. Uh, allow SwitchBot to access location, so I'm gonna say yes. And here we have my Wi-Fi, so it wants me to put that information in. And I have inputted that information, so we're just gonna let it do its thing. Select a room. Just gonna say all devices, and we're going to call this SwitchBot Plug Mini. So there's our name, and we hit save, and done. And now we can actuate SwitchBot. 
just like that. That was setup of the SwitchBot mini plug. As you saw, ridiculously easy to set up, even compared to other smart plugs that I've done, and I've done a lot over there in the corner. But if you've had any other SwitchBot devices, you might be wondering, well, this, during setup, looks like it was using Wi-Fi, and it does. It uses Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz, so that's going to give you longer range, slower speeds, but you don't need those faster speeds, you just need longer range. Because this is a SwitchBot device, there also is Bluetooth, LE, 4.2 integrated into this, meaning that if you're, for whatever reason, Wi-Fi goes out, and I've had that happen to me where I still have power but my Wi-Fi goes out because my ISP is being ridiculous, I could use my smartphone over Bluetooth and still use the smart features of this, which is a great thing that you might not have realized with the SwitchBot plug mini here that other smart plugs cannot do. One other thing to consider is because it does have Wi-Fi integrated into it, unlike some SwitchBot products, which would require you to have a hub in order to use them over Wi-Fi, this one, you don't have to do that. It's built right in. Some other features that the Plug Mini here has that other brands do not is actual energy monitoring which you would pay a lot more for on some of those other competitors. But all of that is actually accessible through the application. So let's take this time to look at the SwitchBot app for the SwitchBot Plug Mini HomeKit Edition. This is the SwitchBot app for the SwitchBot Mini Plug. You can see right here, this is our main screen, which will list out all of our devices. We could see our SwitchBot Plug Mini there is actually highlighted in white, letting us know that that particular item is online. Looking at our main page here, if we quickly come up to the three dots in the corner, we can sort our devices and we can manage locations. Currently, I only have one location. We have our plus sign right here, which will allow us to add other devices to this. We have our notifications area, our home selection. So in my case, I only have one, so it just says my home. We have bots that are nearby. Currently, I don't have any other bots that are nearby and then our actual device. From this screen, we can see that our SwitchBot mini plug is currently off and connected via Wi-Fi. That little cloud indicates that it is connected over Wi-Fi instead of over Bluetooth, which this is capable of doing. If I tap right there, that lets us know now it is turned on. It will also give you a wattage readout right there. So this is just plugged into a LED lamp. So right now it is only doing 4.4 watts and outlined in red, letting us know that that's on. I can turn that off right from there and then the SwitchBot mini plug is off. If I select the plug itself, right here, this is all the data that we can get for it, as well as a giant, hey, this is off button. If I select this on this page, we get a green ring, letting us know now that the SwitchBot plug mini is turned on. I kind of wish that the indicator on the main page was also green instead of red, because to me, red means off or stop. A little, little thing to split hairs about. Up at the top here, we can see today, it's giving us a lot of information. So we've got energy, it's used almost nothing, because realistically, I haven't run this today, because this particular lamp is only used in the evening when I need to clean in that specific area. We have an actual power output while it's on, as well as the current amps and current voltage. We can also see what the power usage was for the other day. And then we have our power on duration. Again, because this lamp is not on all that often, I don't have anything as of yet, but this would allow us to see how long this particular device has been on for. I love when smart devices add stats like this because it adds a little extra aside from just being able to turn on and off your device, which a lot of other things can do. Up here, we also have our history. So if I select this, this will give us a history for this device. So right here, you can see the powered on duration for this device overall has been two hours and 20 minutes with a power consumption of still less than a kilowatt. And here in 2022, it shows us total less than that kilowatt and the total runtime. If I select this, it'll give me a drop down. And here we can see my October stats. And if I click into that, it's gonna actually give me this visualization, this chart. So here you can see nothing, 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 cause I wasn't around. And then, hey, I used this lamp cause I was cleaning and I left it on for an hour, 35 minutes. But this will give you a visual representation breakout. So this will be able to be over months, over years, all that data will be saved here. And you've got the ability to export this data, which is really great. So if I select export, hey, how do I wanna export this particular information? So that is a really cool feature. We're gonna turn our lamp right off, or in my case, the smart plug, we're gonna turn that off. 
Over here, we have the ability to set up a schedule. So let's say there is a particular day and time that you want this to come on and a day and time you want this to come off. We simply come up here and select add. Well, okay, hours, do you want this only once? Or do you want this to repeat? And then action, turn on or turn off. So we can say 8 p.m., repeat, and we can say this day, this day, and this day, and then it'll turn on and we hit save. And then we can add one that says repeat and we'll pretend that these are these similar days, uh, but then we would say turn off and then I would save. And then on those days, the light will turn on at this, time, at this time. And then on these days, the light would turn off. Obviously you wanna have that as a different time, but let's say we only want it to turn on or we only want to turn off. Well, hypothetically, I left this on. Well, guess what? I don't want it to remember that, but I do want to remember having it to turn off. So we can do that. Or in the upper right-hand corner here, I simply select delete and then I can select what I want. I can hit done if I don't wanna do anything or I hit delete down here at the bottom, which will delete those. And then I'm done because I cleared everything out. Selecting back, that's our scheduling delay. Hypothetically, if you wanna delay the turning on or off of this smart device, you can set that up here. So you can have 30 minutes, hour, hour 30, two hours, and then start. So I have to select one. So I will say 30 minutes and we go start. And now it will turn itself on after 30 minutes. So hypothetically, if I know I'm gonna be out for the evening and I don't wanna to have to set up a constant recurring program, but I do want this particular light switch, this particular smart plug to turn on because it's a light, well, I can set this and then I don't have to worry about remembering. The smart plug will automatically turn itself on by the time I come home because of that setting. We also have a logs function right here. So this is gonna show you everything that's happened. So right here, you can see these are particular Amazon Echo commands that I ran with it, cause you can set up Amazon Echo, which we're getting into, but it shows you turned on, turned off. I did have, when I was initially setting it up and testing, I did have one unknown error, uh, but I just had to do a firmware update and it took care of that. But that is our logs area. So that's everything for the controls of the smart plug itself. Now in the upper right hand corner right here, and we can see it also shows that the power duration for today has been two minutes now. But in the upper right hand corner, we have the sprocket icon, which brings us into the settings for the plug itself, not just the operation, but the actual settings for it. So at the top here, we have the naming convention. I just called it SwitchBot Plug Mini. Uh, I can select that and I can change the name, change its location and change its room. So I'm not going to, but that's how you could do it. And you can see right there, it says all devices, which is your room and then which home it pertains to. Right here we have our Wi-Fi setting. So if you needed to set this up via Wi-Fi, you can come back in here and change it. Here we have our indicator light on or off. So there is an indicator light on the front of the device. If you don't want to have an indicator light because maybe you have this in a bedroom, controlling a device that you want to run overnight, you don't want that indicator light to be on. That's how you would turn it off. Here we have mistouch prevention. So right now it's off, but I can turn this on. And if I do, it's gonna give me this little warning saying, when this is turned on, a window is gonna pop up on the phone that you have to confirm first before the action will actually happen. So if that's somebody uses a voice command, uses the button on the plug, or has this on their home and tries to use the button, you're always gonna get that warning saying, hey, what's going on? Do you wanna approve this? Coming down, we have our cloud services. You have the ability to integrate with Google Assistant, Amazon's Assistant, IFTTT, and Line Clove for Japan only, so not for my area, but I got the big three right there. Coming back, we also have the ability for NFC controls. These you will need the SwitchBot smart tags in order to do, but you can hypothetically set up routines where I use NFC on my phone and touch this particular tag and this action happens, or set up another tag and this action happens. So realistically, you have the ability to turn on or off the plug, but you also have the ability to switch between on and off. And those are all done through those NFC tags, which you would have to pick up because they're none that come with the box. But it's nice for the price of this plug that that kind of thing is thrown in here. We have our FAQ. So coming in here is going to bring up pretty much the SwitchBot support page and you can find your particular device. Right here we have our firmware. My firmware is up to date, so there's nothing there. And then we have our device info, which I won't be showing you because there is a lot of sensitive information in that area, but that's where you can find the MAC address and all that fun stuff for your device. And then all the way down here at the bottom, this is our delete. So if you want to remove this from your SwitchBot account, this is how you would do that. And we're going to select back because that is everything that we can do for the SwitchBot plug mini here within the SwitchBot app. As you saw, there is a lot that you can do with this plug mini 
using the application for its form factor. And let's be honest, SwitchBot, not terribly well known for things like this. I was actually very surprised with the amount that you could do. I also appreciate that even though the application integrates other SwitchBot products, that it doesn't kind of crowd the app. It is still easily to discern the Plug Mini from other things that you have in there, which again is a design thing that you might not actually think about. But something that I think about, having come from a condo that used electricity for all of my appliances, is actual power usage of devices. So the Plug Mini here uses 0.07 watts of power when idling, meaning it's just plugged into your electricity and connected to your Wi-Fi. When turned on, meaning you're not actually plugging something into this, but you turn this button on, it will use between one watt and 0.9 watts of power. Now, compared to all of the other plugs that I've done, the power usage is not the highest, but it's also not the lowest. But one of the things that I want to reiterate is the fact that this also has a Bluetooth chip inside of it, not just a Wi-Fi connection. So it is going to use a little more power, but it's still not using crazy amounts where it's going to be detrimental to having this plug around or having several plugs around. One other thing that I like to consider with smart plugs is what happens when power is lost. Meaning if I have something plugged into this, power is lost to the device and then power is returned, what happens to the device that was plugged into this? Meaning if I had a light plugged into this and the power went out, when the power comes back and this reconnects, is that light on or off? So if you have something plugged into this and it is in an on state, meaning a light is on, power is lost and then restored, the light will return to an on state. Likewise, if the power is lost and that light is off, once the power is restored and this reconnects, that light will be off. That doesn't mean that it's a good or a bad thing, but it's a data point because if power is lost and it's dark out, you want that light to come back on when power is restored. However, if it's three o'clock in the morning when the power is restored and this is in your bedroom, that might be a problem. I do wish that they had uh, something in the application that would allow you to alter the on state when power is restored. That is something I'm looking at you, SwitchBot. That is a possibility and would be a cool option to have. Speaking of when power is lost and power is restored, how long it takes for your smart device to reconnect itself to your network is another thing. So. In the case of not just your Wi-Fi going down, but your power in general going down, because then you can't use this over Bluetooth, it will take about 15 seconds for this to reestablish a connection to your Wi-Fi network once power is restored to it. Small data point, but something I like to do, especially with something like this, which might be in a hard to reach place, meaning you can't actually turn the device on yourself because you'd have to unplug it from here and then plug it into the wall to get it working again. So something to consider. Last thing with a smart device is pricing and pricing can be variable depending on when you see this video. Right now, as of filming this video, the SwitchBot Plug Mini here, HomeKit Edition is $15. The only other smart plug that I've had that has come anywhere close to the pricing of this was the Wise Plug. However, for that price though, you do not get half the extras that you actually get with the SwitchBot Plug Mini. So if this is the first time you've actually heard of SwitchBot, you did not know that they made mini plugs, I strongly recommend checking out the SwitchBot Mini Plug HomeKit Edition, especially if you have an Apple HomeKit. Not a lot of smart plugs support that. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.